Hello, this is Harker to Bean, and today we are going to be reading some entity documents. Some you've heard, some you haven't. If you like this video, please please leave a like on the video. Now let's get right into this. Starting with the clumps, which are pretty well known. Entity number five, habitat majority. Most notably, levels 2 and 3. Description. Clumps are strange, dangerous bundles of limbs capable of tremendous speed and incredible agility. Their preferred habitat is majority of levels. Their preferred habitat in majority of levels are spaces which are tight in comparison to their size, with the largest recording specimens being about 3 feet. Though this makes them difficult to spot, clumps may still be seen in levels 2 and 3. Over a serial update, a strange inexplicable phenomenon has occurred where the number of clump sightings appear to be diminishing. Nonetheless, we can't fully acknowledge the possibility of extinction as most levels are infinite, but perhaps, perhaps we'll have to see. Please report any sightings of clumps to the nearest MEG Meg member. Overseer C. Behavior. Clumps seem to be in a constant state of hunger, roaming levels in search of prey. When prey is found, clumps will make their way towards it. When within 8 feet, clumps will stretch out their longest limb in an attempt to capture it, bring its prey toward their center to reveal a mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth. From there, the prey will be eaten. However, for unknown reasons, not many are known to attack right away. Overseer update again. Recent developments have shown that clumps are revealing signs of deliberate starvation. Ignoring in almost every wanderer that passes by with unless provoked. Still looking as to why. Overseer C. Biology. As said, clumps consist of a multitude of limbs, all varying in length and, mus and muscular structure. This unusual old structure affects the way clumps run. They tend to swipe at the floor in order to move. Once in motion, they exhibit incredible amounts of strength and speed, being very, being very agile with their movements. They have also been reports of eyes and ears, or being seen emerging from the massive appendages. Overseer update. Dead and even living clumps appear to have incredibly dry skin. We've, just, we've demonstrated an attack on a few, and their bones were found to be extremely brittle. Though it was rare, we did see a pair or more or of eyes in a clump. It looked like it was... crying? None of us were sure why, but something in our heads kept c telling us that their god was gone. I suppose... I suppose that'd be true for all of us. If gods truly did exist. What the heck happened in the back rooms? Discovery. The first report of a of a clump was made by a wanderer with the name of Elliot Winson, in which they encountered a, a skin sealer and successfully escaped, getting attacked by a clump shortly after. To add, the lost, one of the first and oldest groups of backrooms, seemed to have mentioned clumps within ancient scrolls found deep within level 3. They referred to them as the ones with eternal limbs. A translated ex- Excerpt of one of these scrolls is written beneath hello. Pronounced as uh, O. Oh, from Ta Ashia, knowing she would diminish along her side her beloved humans, which to band together and give peace to the walls of yellow. Had to show them what true unification was like. Taking a group of humans under the guise of celestial guidance, she shall create the first true symbol of unification. The one with eternal lives. Disgusted by what she had created, fearful, our people banished her deep into the greenhouse of judgment. Still, she continued to make the ones with eternal limbs with those who came by, even as she began to fade away. Do's and don'ts. Do stay silent in their presence and keep at least eight feet away from them. Retreat at the sound of multiple people running. Don't go near them at all if one is spotted. Try to interact with them. 
Stick around when a clump is moving into one's position. You didn't think my beloved creation would simply fade away. <sighs> and did you? Entity number five. Habitat majority, most notably levels two and three, and also the cultivator's courthouse. Clumps are in these that consist of a bundle of human limbs. This largest clump was reported to be about four feet, wielding human in, inhuman strength and inhuman speed and incredible strength. They frequent in tight spaces within a large number of levels, such as levels 2 and 10. They were previously known as disappearing entities, assumed to have retreated to far deeper levels until just two weeks ago, where the number of clump sightings reached an all-time high. Clumps are known to be in a constant state of hunger, constantly roaming levels in search of wanderers. Recent developments have shown that wanderers wearing wall masks, particularly only masks, seem to intimidate instances of NT5, causing them to either bow or flee to consume. When a target is found, a clump will rapidly swipe at the floor and move towards it. Within 8 feet, it will stretch out its longest limb. On most clumps, their longest limb ranges from 8 to 10 feet in an attempt to grab its prey, bringing them towards its center to reveal a mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth. From there, the prey will be eaten. Do forgive them. They're more focused on their own hunger than actually protecting my beloved. It, it, delivering sentences. Once they've eaten their fill, clumps will enter a dormant state. During this time, they'll dig into the ground for, or in some cases, break through the carpets as concrete of any level and bury themselves in it, if you only the longest limb out in the open as they sleep. In this process, it's possible for them to get injured, thus making them even more vulnerable. It's best to exterminate them during this state. Biology as mentioned in previously, clumps are a bundle of human limbs. Each limb is of different lengths and muscular structures, rendering it difficult for clumps to travel smoothly. Nonetheless, they are capable of moving at tremendous speeds, jumping over obstacles, traveling through vents, and climbing up walls. Besides limbs, there have also been reports of clumps with other body parts, such as eyes and ears. Similar to their sister creation, Snatcher Weeds, their skin has a sticky, Almost do we feel to them. Their scent is similar to that of burnt flesh and red delia is. In, actual, in fact, red delia symbolizes betrayal and dishonesty. Though there is nothing within a, clump, uh, within a clump's flesh that causes such sense. Of all the things about this indie, however, this part may be the most important. When a clump is harmed, its flesh black it onto the ground and left uncleaned, a new, smaller clump will grow from the ground. There is no way to explain the scientific components we in hindsight growth, though it can easily be compared to the way a flower grows. Fascinating, isn't it? How easily one could compare one thing to another, knowing how drastically different those two things are. Discovery. You know, there was once a group who walked among us long ago. Well, technically, they still walk among us now. They predicted within their ancient scrolls of a being who would roam the entirety of the back rooms. A ruthless symbol of tainted purity and corruption. The ones with eternal limbs, they called them. A rather fitting name. Far more sophisticated than what you people call my darlings. Typical of those like the laws by the grass. You want to learn how they were first discovered. You've been so good. You've been so good reading so far. Fine. I suppose we'll tell you. 
It was meant to be a gift. My favorites among your people, they all agreed to become the first. I've never forced them to. I crafted them into what you now call clumps. It took far longer time to craft them, even with her celestial hands. Far harder for this is way. I thought the people would be happy, but they saw me only as a new threat. A threat against a home I could never bring myself to hurt. And so, they chased it and her out. And to think, unification only led to betrayal. You may think that amuses me, Ethan, but it truly doesn't. <sighs> there were those who still believed in me. Through their belief, I stayed alive, taking only the terminally ill and the truly weak to craft. They think me a monster, but a monster bother asking their permission first. And now, as less and less people know of, their, of her existence, she had to take a chance now. I didn't understand it at first. Choosing me who had been blinded with liquid pain. Me who saw nothing but corruption, but now I got it. You bring them back for me, just the way it should be. Even if there are a few new things about them. Why don't you take a visit? Maybe you too will understand. Do's and don'ts. Do stay silent in their presence and keep at least eight feet away from them. Retreat at the sound of multiple people running. Don't go near them at all once one is spotted. Don't try to interact with them. Don't stick around when Clamp is moving into one's position. Don't let yourself get corrupted. I already know what a few of these are, but this one... This one is a mystery. The Judge's Garden. Sounds like a level. We'll visit that another time. Right now, we have the dollars, I think. Now, this is the things that we saw before, where you just grabbed their hand and you tamed them. Those things are adorable. Anyway. Alright, we're back. We have the dollars. Entity number six. Habitat, majority of levels. Description. Dollars are strange creatures, generally found in the lower levels of the backrooms. They appear dark, gray, and humanoid, but they lack several prominent features, such as a face or ears. It is not fully understood how dollars kill their prey, as they usually run away from, from threats. Behaviors. They usually run away from anything that gets close, but be aware that these indies do seem to be hostile. The entity it hunts by being in a hall and having a victim in a hall on the other side of a wall. The dollar will then no cliff its arm through the a wall, capturing the prey on the other side, and then drag them into their hall. If he knows the dollar without their hunting tactic, they will silently run away. It is unknown what they do to you once once captured. They can sometimes take seemingly random objects, and it is unknown what they do with the items. They also seem to dislike almond water, as well others report that Dolly seem to avoid almond water fountains and other items. Biology. Tall, gray, a humanoid. Frail skeletal structure. No facial features. They have long arms that can extend to very far distances, usually to reach a prey on the other side of the wall. Their stance is very wobbly and their walking motion is unnatural. These entities are surprisingly strong for how their body structure looks. They can, however, run at extreme speeds, even while holding items twice their own weight. Discovery It is unknown how this entity was discovered in modern times, a group known as the Laws mentioned of uh, being known as Grass of the Wall, which could be referring to a dollar. Do's and Don'ts do specifically run to it if you can. It will run away. Use almond water on yourself or against them. Don't lose your almond water. Don't be on the opposite wall from the dollar. 
Moving on, we have the disease. And we're back with a content warning. This article contains descriptive body horror and slight gore. If you are sensitive to these sorts of topics, read further into the article only at your discretion. Taking note of the time that we're at, we are at 15 minutes and 20 seconds in. Spam that right key, hey, folks. I'll tell you when to stop. From Fisher Mason at level 109 NBR. On to subject to send NS at level 109 BR. On corrupted data. Subject Thursday patient. Oh gosh, this is a long one. Hi Dennis, you should receive a patient, Carl Johnson, with one hour, within one hour for a blood test. I'm sending you the context of his visit to help you with the analysis. He's been allocated it from U45 with the hospital, within the hospital dimension. So send him there with his attendant Brian Tor afterwards. Have a good day, Mason Fisher. Attachments one. Name, Johnson Carl, age 24, gender male, context, Mr. Tr Johnson Carl cut his right thigh of fleeing a creature with his comrade in the place we call the pipe dimension three days ago. The latter insisted on coming to consult here in the hospital dimension as he was experiencing unpleasant symptoms. See below. Symptoms, irritation around the wound, slight redness on certain parts of the body, and fatigue. Exams ordered, complete blood culture. Oh, we have uh, a story. Footsteps are heard in the corridor leading to the sampling room, revealing two travelers crossing their footsteps. Their footsteps are resolute yet hesitant, seemingly worried which way to go in order or to reach their destination. One who looked tired, sporting a slight rush on his arms, something his companion didn't seem to display. Both seemed disoriented. The water this was due to their ex inexperience in the strange geography of the dimensions or to fatigue is hard to say. Dennis, having received the email from a superior, opened the door of the sampling room to welcome them. He recognized the doctor as patient and directly from his description. Nothing new, just routine. He asked the patient to sit on the chair in order to extract the blood samples. The traveler complied, with a, still with a heavy step, leaving his comrade in the corridor. As usual. As Dennis was doing in his job, the man told him of the reasons that had brought him, him here, in a rather absent voice, rather pointless giving his, his previous visit to the doctor, but at least had the advantage of distracting the man from the needle. Even in the dimensions, this kind of inconvenience persisted, and patients always did their best to try and ignore the foreign object inserting itself into their veins. Nothing new. Then it sank the traveler, then told him about the hospital room assigned to him. He would have liked to have accompanied them to avoid the inconvenience posed by the intertwined corridors of the hospital dimension. Even when populated by mankind, it continued to confuse travelers, but unfortunately, the samples had to be taken care of. The bacterial culture wasn't going to happen by itself. The traveling duo would be okay without him. As always, Yet deep down, Dennis had a strange feeling. Although this day was going on as usual, he couldn't help thinking that today, with this specific patient, something was going to change here. He shrugged, grabbed the samples, and head for the culture room. Like every day. <sighs> oh dear, we're going to be in here for a long one, aren't we? Day one. Hi Mason, so far nothing special. It looks, it just looks like a classic Xaphiel Ocook is ours infection. I have inoculated the Iagra plates for the blood culture and I'll have the first results tomorrow as usual. As for the rest, I don't know if you've been able to see the patients, but the nurse reported that and he's feeling really unwell. They say his condition has worsened and his complexion has become red. I'd keep an eye on you. I know if I were you, since his symptoms are nothing like what they should be for the diagnosis. 
You know better than I, though, so I suppose it's your call. Have a nice day. Then it is Sutton. Day two. Hi, Mason. I don't know if you saw him get message yesterday as he didn't reply, but in any case, forget what I said. This is not a standard infection. The colonies grew at a concerning rate on the culture. Even the one on almond water agar or a 10% concentration, which is supposed to be toxic for or cephalo oak oak -us. As you can imagine, this means that the infection will be extremely difficult to manage. I know you're very busy at the e e e moment, but it sounds like a serious case. I've never seen anything like it, even in the dimensions. If the pipe dimension has a mutated strain of some kind of infection, we need to act as quickly as possible, especially with the lack of widespread institutions. Have a nice day, Dennis Sutton. Day 3. From Dennis to Mason. You really need to come see me. I've never seen anything quite like it. The identification of this bacteria is part of nothing. It's completely unknown. Worse than that, it doesn't seem to react to the antibiotics we usually use. We must do something about this patient. Please respond quickly. Dennis Sutton. Hmm. I don't know if this changes the thing down here. I hope not. Day and time amidst corrupted data. Also, as I mentioned, sector room 245. Just this morning, patient Carl Johnson began and convulsing in pain. When two nurses came to assess the situation, they saw Mr. Johnson covered in blood. He was bleeding profusely from his arms, abdomen, and right thigh. He tried to get up to no avail, but two nurses, aided by the patient's friend, managed to apply tourniquets. The patient fainted due to blood loss in the process. Aftermath. The area was quarantined in view of the bacteriological test carried out in the days leading up to the incident. Mr. Johnson and his comrade does not appear to be any any his psychological distress. All three individuals were decontaminated and allowed to leave the quarantine zone. Mr. Johnson was declared comatose a few hours later. An in-depth idea of the pathogen found on Mr. Johnson began in order to use better understand its nature and how it could be treated. From Mason to Dennis. Subject, unknown disease. Hi Dennis, sorry I've only just in your e emails after the incident. This is indeed a very big problem. It's impossible for us to regulate the travelers going to the pipe dimension because of the lack of communication between the rare communities within the dimensions, between the rare outposts. Nevertheless, we're going to have to deal with this infection as best as we can. If a new patient appears, the disease is likely to spread very quickly, and the hospital could be doomed. A large part of the medical staff has been mobilized to analyze the blood samples in hopes that we can understand what's going on before it's too late. I remain available should any problems arise. Mason Fisher The technicians in the cultivation room set about out their tasks with a haste that seemed unusual. Among them, Dennis was probably the most worried. He was the one who, who delivered the strange culture results. Well, it's, who is the one connected to the patient's unusual story that was making rounds of the hospital? A peculiar but anxiety provoking story of blood, screams, and an unknown disease with seemingly devastating effects. Dennis knew this story far too well, though he hadn't been there at the time. He quickly made the connection between the bloody man, room 245, and Dr. Fisher's patient. First, he didn't want to believe it. Results he sent back were certainly strange, but he didn't want to admit that he'd had in his hands not. Only the most resistant strain he'd ever analyzed, but also the most dangerous. Dr. Fisher and the other her doctors quickly took charge, despite the distant look they, gave, they had given Dennis. It's earlier in the. They had given Dennis's messages in earlier days. Half the unit Dennis was in and was now working shoulder to shoulder with him, analyzing the samples recovered from the patient after the event. Numerous agar petri dishes of various Compositions were being prepared simultaneously. With the staff unsure of which path to follow, Dennis, for his part, was preparing several antibiograms with a strain. Looking glum, 
He knew it. He knew that everyone here was thinking the same thing, but didn't want to admit it. The bacteria wasn't anything they knew. Despite all their efforts, identification was simply impossible. They were in no way equipped to study new strains. In fact, then it's out of the very existence of a research unit in these dimensions. The, our only hope was that, somehow, the disease would remain confined to this unfortunate patient. A bleak prospect indeed, but still more optimistic than the, the contamination of multiple staff representatives, or worse, other dimensions. He sighed as he closed those three petri dishes containing the antibiograms he'd just performed. He rose to his feet, not only dodging one of his companions who was hurrying towards the cabinet containing the petri dishes, then head to the for the incubators to place his work. Hmm. Suddenly, the hospital siren sounded for the first time in years. And Dennis never made it to set in incubators, realizing to his horror what was happening. This is a level 5 containment alert. This is not drill. Please leave your, leave your rooms or stations and proceed immediately to the nearest no oak clip area with your supervisor or team leader. If you are contaminated, please remain where you are and wait for qualified personnel to arrive. Whereupon you will be placed in isolation. I repeat, this is not a drill. This is not a drill. Second passage on the right. Next corridor. Although never used, the emergency procedure was common knowledge. Straight on through the sampling room corridor. When the emergency bell rang, the entire Earth team was to exit and call and make their way to the nearest no clip point. Straight ahead and left at the T at the T junction. The point closest to the laboratory was naturally connected to the flooded cavern dimension. A small community had so had a recent cell there and would be able to host them for some time before the hospital dimension could be decontaminated. Turn left at the T junction. As he was about to follow his colleagues into the next section of the corridor, Dennis was startled by the sound of an inhuman voice piercing the flying sirens. He turned and back to the right side of the crossing, astonished. What he saw there chilled his blood, making him realize the scale of, this, of the disaster that was unfolding today. About 10 meters ahead, they, just, they should discern the spasming body of an orderly covered in blood. The unfortunate man was screaming at the top of his lungs as two men in protective suits tried to immobilize him. Then, shaking all over, had just grasped the gravity of the situation. The bacteria had spread over the last few days without anyone noticing, bypassing the meager safeguards his mentions provided. He turned around but couldn't make out any of his colleagues, so had to continue on their way. Fear gripped him. Could he end up bleeding to death here, having failed to reach the exit before he closed? Then, dashed through the corridors, trying to catch up with the rest of his, his group. Straight ahead, left into the storeroom, passing the bend to the first cluster of rooms. Out of breath, Dennis managed to make a, out a human form that seemed to be crossing the wall in front of him. He no clip point. He called out, but there was, there was no answer, the person having already crossed the threshold. Despite fatigue, he redoubled his willpower, trying to wait for the invisible portal before it was sealed on the other side. <sighs> I I don't really know where to start. So much has happened in the last few hours. I guess I'll pick up where I left off with the alert. It's taken us all by a surprise, of course. For many of us, it was the first time we'd heard it. But it was the mention of alert level 5 that really chilled us. It probably me doesn't mean anything to you, but when you've arrived here as a technician, you're trained in everything to do with safety here. And part of that is evacuation alerts. They go from one to five. And five is the one that represents massive, out of control contamination of the entire dimension. The procedure, we knew it. Even if we'd all buried it in the darkest corner of our memory because the prospect of it happening seems so impossible. Stop everything you're doing and head for the nearest no clip point.
For us, that was the point that had led to the flight of cave dimension. But the path was the most traumatic experience we've ever had. People were running everywhere. Screams could be heard heard from distance for personnel who had been infected. I were now bleeding as Carl Jen Onsen had bled. But no one could come to their rescue. Even the security staff, those who were supposed to put them in isolation, were fleeing the hospital. I don't know where Mason no clipped, although I'm confident he and the other doctors made it. We closed the no clips access as right after our, our passage, as procedure required, to prevent the infected from following and contaminating us. I don't know what to think. I've lived and worked in the hospital dimension for eight years. It's all unreal. That feeling I had, I never thought it would really change. That everything would change so much. The others are kind of depressed too. The flood cave camp picked us up. They were as worried as we were, not understanding what was going on. We explained the situation to them, but they didn't believe it at first. To tell the truth, we didn't believe it either. Now they're quite suspicious. I can understand that. They're afraid of being infected themselves, even though we explained that none of us had seen any bleeding. In the end, they welcomed us despite all their fears. I don't know how the rest this is going to work out. I have to contact Mason again. The hospital dimension must not be deserted. We've got to get under control. The dimensions are hostile. The travelers need us. We're going to have to re to decontaminate. And our lack of knowledge is going to be our greatest enemy. I assume only a few rooms are uncontaminated beyond control. Either way, we're going to have to sort it out. Well, it's late already. And to be honest, all this has tired me out. I hope it all gets better. Hmm. Dennis put down his journal, and his body felt heavy on his assigned sleeping bag. The floor was hard. He was no longer used to sleeping outside his room in the hospital, while they mentioned. In fact, he was no longer used to leaving the hospital. The last few hours had drained him of all his energy. He was hot, he was flushed, he was stressed. Dennis was not prepared for this kind of situation. The routine he did established for himself had broken down, and he was totally disoriented as a result. He hoped that Mason had pulled through and that he and the other doctors wouldn't take matters into their own hands and reinvest in the hospital. They had to. The stakes were far too high. He was so hot. He was so red. His limbs hurt. And as he began to drift off to sleep, then Sutton almost felt his blood running down his left arm. User Katya of 576 entered the room using er uh, created the room. Use er uh, Katya of 576 entered the room. User someone in the room entered the room. Hey, remember that bleeding in disease thing? Don't remind me. I'm on the case and it's a big pain in the ass. Like, why did they give me this? Yes, I, I know about bacteria and stuff, but I never finished medical school. I don't have the equipment to do it. Do you know what it is level 109? I don't believe in numberation. You have to be more precise. It's an abandoned hospital. A group of scientists of some sort discovered it. The doctors, they call themselves. What an original name. And do they have any info on the thing? I'm getting to that. They reported they found lots of rooms that are highly infected by the disease. That doesn't really help me. Have they studied it? No, not only have they studied it, but we, they've also found records of an ancient group that lived here long ago, like a hundred years before the EMEG. Can you believe it? There are already groups this big before us. Wait, the infection. You're telling me it, it started there? We're not sure. A lot of data was corrupted. Since they know we've started a database about entities, they've sent us their study results. 
as well as important un documents to understand everything. That's fucking crazy. Can you send them to me? Sure. I saw art compiling on the info, so you have to come back to add stuff or correct mistakes. I don't understand any of this jargon, so if you can explain the complicated words, that'd be great. You're a lifesaver, man. Could you put me in touch with the groups? Yeah, they're open to collaboration. Well, time's starting out, and my superior is getting impatient. I'll send you this, and so we'll talk about it again and, and tonight I in the cafeteria. Okay, thanks for everything. It's going to help me a lot. End of archive at log. Someone in the room shared a file. Open file. Oh dear. I expect to not really know what this is saying, but let's get right into this again. Entity 19, informally known as a disease, is a highly transmissible bacteria um, via airborne particles in infected blood. It induces this emanated intravascular coagulation, which is in the most advanced ages, leads to profuse bleeding and necrosis. According to the records, another file is found on level 109 by doctors when they arrived in the level. This disease largely predates the creation of the MEG, with patient zero having been discovered around a hundred years ago. Generalities. The disease, scientific name, Staphylococcus liminalis, is a bacterial species discovered a hundred years ago when an infected patient arrived for treatment on level 109. It is a species that arrived from the is Staphylococcus kind. Hang on, I missed a thing. Oh, here it is. Coagulation anomalies which cause is the appearance of clots blocking blood vessels. Gram positive coccus and clusters. And this in, in acceptance of thromboembolic origins, blood infection, and causing the appearance of clots in blood vessels. It can infect not only humans, but also certain an animals and entities. Infection may occur by breathing contaminated air or by contact with blood contaminated with strains of the bacterium. For example, touching your face with a previously un with a previously contaminated hand, effectively introducing infected blood into the body. The bacterium can be found in damp places and thrives particularly well in environments ranging from 24 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. As explained above, the disease causes the formation of blood clots that block blood vessels. This leads to hemorrhaging coupled with hemophilia and necrosis of limbs and organs that no longer have blood flow due to the clot of the induced blockage of blood Essos. Evolution and symptoms. The disease is contracted by a bleeding on a level where the entity is present. See present section below. It can also appear if the water breeds in an abundant and quantity of the latter, as in an environment close to an infected corpse or another waterer in the later stages of the disease. Its evolution can be divided into four stages. Stage 1. Peaceful phase. The peaceful phase occurs just a few hours after the initial infection. During this stage, the bacteria causes a minor inflammation of the area around the wound, resulting in a slight reddening of the skin, a dull nagging pain, and slightly increased local heat. This, this inflammation is caused by the mobilization of phagocytes, a biodefense system which digests and destroys foreign and or dangerous elements. Oh, like your white blood cells. Okay which come to eliminate the strains in the NC-19. To, pro to protect itself from destruction by the body's defenses, Cephalococcus Islaminalis produces a molecule called 
limit eliminate it then. This has two effects on the on correlation. Firstly, it mimics the actions of Willebrand actor, a glyso a glyco of protein involved in platelet clot formation, i.e., the creation of a cluster or a platelet at the level of the vascular bridge. This has the effect of not only closing in the vascular breach more quickly, but also forming additional platelet clusters suspended in the blood. As the presence of these platelet clusters risks clogging blood vessels and disrupting blood flow, phagocytes will come to destroy them and thus be distracted from getting the presence of luminalis. Symptoms at this stage are almost non-existent. If the infected wanderer does not uh, expect to contract the disease, it is almost impossible to notice the difference in clotting speed. Additionally, many things can mask the symptoms in the peaceful phase, such as pain from wounds. And for this reason, it is advised to seek immediate treatment for any injuries and sustained warm and damp levels. Even though symptoms seem to be present, the disease cannot be cured at later stages. Stage 2, Hidden Phase. Oh, where did my cursor go? Oh, there it is. During this stage, the eliminated end will continue its effect, forcing the creation of blood clots despite the vascular breach being already obstructed. The phagocytes will continue to try to destroy them, giving the bacteria time to multiply. This multiplication of bacteria will produce more or eliminate them, leading to more blood clots that are more and more important in size, and therefore hard to destroy by phagocytosis. It is during the hidden phase that eliminate them exerts a second in action in the process of hemostasis. The term hemostasis is it's all the physiological phenomena that enable bleeding to stop. Never the act action of plasminogen activators. Under normal circumstances, this molecule would eventually destroy platelet clusters, thus preventing them from clogging the blood vessels and, in turn, proper blood flow to the, the body, these organs. However, in this case, this control mechanism cannot be activated, preventing coagulation from taking place. It is during this stage that the immune system as a whole begins to fight the infection while continuing to destroy the platelet clusters. This will result in inflammatory reaction type symptoms, redness, heat, pain, or swelling, which this time are visible because they are much more widespread throughout the body. At this stage, it is still possible to manage the disease as the patient is not truly contagious and the immune system, though fighting a futile cause, is not overwhelmed. Yet, it is possible to assist the immune system with a strict diet consisting of grilled rations and almond water, which will invigorate the immune system. Nevertheless, survival depends on how, upon how developed the hidden phase is. Statistically, seventy percent of patients who receive treatment early on into the hidden phase will make a full recovery from NC19. Whereas towards the end of the stage, this number decreases to only twenty percent. If you have any suspicions of infection, Please refer to the care and prevention section of this article. Stage 3 Complication Phase. As the name suggests, it's in the, third, it's in the third stage that the prognosis really begins to look life threatening. The clots continually produced by the disease as secretions begin to obstruct the blood vessels. These vessels dilate in an attempt to let blood through, vessel dilation causing severe reddening of the skin. Certain limbs become less in nerve as the blood struggles to pass through the platelet clusters, which are destroyed or slowly by the immune system due to their quantity throughout the body. This is why at this stage, most affected waters report that they can no longer feel their fingers or feet. Furthermore, the most infamous symptom of infection at this stage is the opening of blood vessels. It occurs when they dilate so much that they burst. The infected water will then begin to bleed from from various places, including the arms, legs, and face. 
However, as most of the body's platelets are now clogging the blood vessels due to limitation, uh, the body is unable to plug the many verse, resulting in hemophilia. A coagulation and an abnormality of the blood that prevents it from clogging. I feel like we've seen that before. The blood, therefore, continues to flow continuously from the individual's wounds. At this stage, the symptoms are clearly visible. In addition to multiple hemorrhages, the infected water will, will feel severe pain in the limbs and organs of the blood due to clots and bursted vessels. In addition, generalized fatigue begins to set in, along with the redness that persists even at this stage. Any time that ed treatment is unsuccessful, as the disease is too advanced for the immune system to fight. Furthermore, the blood released by the water contains strains of NC19, making it extremely toxic upon contact. Such strains of the bacterium can remain airborne for up to a week in the human environment. It is highly likely to breathe in large quantities and develop the disease while being around an infected corpse. Only palliative care can be provided. Treatments that only prevent symptoms but have no influence on the progression of the disease, such as tourniquets. However, water in the complication phase must be considered loss and should not be approached under any circumstances because of the risk of transmission via the respiratory route. Stage 4 Necrotic Phase this stage only appears if the wanderer has not already succumbed to their wounds. During the necrotic phase, limbs and organs that no longer receive blood will begin to necrotize. Hemorrhaging will continue as the blood vessel will tears. Moreover, the aggregates will begin to migrate to other organs, such as the lungs, which they can obstruct, causing breathing problems. This also happens to the brain, with most often inducing a stroke leading to the wanderer's death. The wanderer will die either from blood loss or the death of one of their vital organs. An increased amount of bacteria will become airborne, making the area become a biohazard. Behavior to adopt in this situation can be found in the treatment and prevention section. It is vital to avoid all contact with anyone who has entered the fourth stage, if contact wasn't already being avoided. As in the previous stage, treatment is impossible. Do not attempt to terminate the victim's life in a way that will create a wound, such as a gunshot. While this is noble and restful behavior, it will not lodge more bacteria into the air. Treatment and Prevention Although the disease is incurable once it reaches stage 3, it can be managed if it is in stage ages 1 and 2. However, as symptoms are extremely mild during the stages, it is required that patients take a test to confirm infection by detecting the presence of lemon and if you have an injury in hot or humid level or experiencing slight lung pain, and please go directly to level 109 or the nearest MEG is for testing. This could well be the difference between life and death for you and your companions. If you are unable to seek help, try to find almond water and raw rations and to boost your immune system. You should also make sure to get adequate rest to allow your body to fight the infection. The backrooms of Tubox firm recently launched the red at light white light test, which can be used to check food for the presence of bacteria. Uh, then um, the red light white white light product from Backrooms of Rocks is currently subject to considerable controversy following the leak of a classified uh, documents, and so its effectiveness is no longer guaranteed. The MEG strongly advises against the use of red at light white light until further notice. As far as prevention is concerned, it is important you take care not to approach corpses of humans, animals, or entities. You are advised to not spend too much time in hot, humid areas. If you need to travel or stay in those types of environments, regularly consume royal rations and on water to strengthen the immune system. Crystals of fire salt can also be used to purify water or food, if it is suspected of being infected with strains of bacterium. The doctors are currently working with the MEG to create a vaccine against the disease on level 109. But this is proving very difficult at the moment due to lack of material and knowledge. The most promising avenue at present is the use of contaminated plasma from death rats who appear to be immune to the effects of the disease. 
Studies have been conducted to understand the links between the disease and other entities, such as with ancient with sentient aircrafts. Attention! For a few months now, rumors have been circling about out the supposed beneficial effects of Aurora Luminalis on the, the evolution of the disease. These are unfounded, as the a phenomenon does not seem to consider diseases, including Cephalocus, as injuries. It's important not to believe gossip and to stick as closely as possible to the official information in the database. Presence In view of the dangers posed by this bacterial species, the MEG keeps an up-to-date list of levels with outbreaks of the infection. Nevertheless, please bear in mind that the summary table below is not exhaustive as there are possibly unknown outbreaks or undocumented in areas with strains and of an entity in 19. Level 1, contaminated... It, so we have level number, contaminated areas, and additional notes. Level 1, rooms with high humidity. The contaminated areas under this level are often those with particularly thick fog. These areas should be avoided at all costs, and masks should be worn if, not, if such is not possible. Level 2, sections of corridors over 24 degrees Celsius, or 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. While sources confirm its presence on this level, the latest reports seem to indicate that the epidemic has been eradicated here. The men are, under, are, are in the hot, humid areas of the level. However, as there is no such thing as zero risk. Level 3, Rooms with High Humidity. Just like the previous levels, humid areas in this location are to be avoided, and proper hygiene practices are strongly advised. Level 3.1, No Specific Areas. The measures to be adopted are the same as for the parent level. Level 5, The Boiler Room. It's advised not to come into contact with the room's machinery as the dampness of the wall is conductive to bacterial proliferation. Level 109, Biohazard Rooms. These rooms will not be open under any circumstances. Level 155, Brick Services. Similar to Level 5, it is not advisable to come into contact with the wet services on this level. Level 173, Warm Lakes. While the water is unfit for consumption, it can be purified with fire star crystals if care is taken. However, this should only be done as a last resort. Level 197. Zone 3, the Ruby Zone. It is advised to leave this zone as soon as possible to reach the Turquoise Zone should the opportunity arise. Level 571, Floor 3. This floor is the first to present itself as hostile on this level. As a result, and due to the presence of other entities on top of the disease, its exploration is strongly discouraged. Attention! It seems that Level 4 has recently been infected and an epidemic has started there. The bases have been quarantined as a precautionary measure, so it is not possible to approach them. MEG teams are actively disinfecting contaminated zones of the level by eliminating corpses as well as sterilizing inhabited places. A temporary base has been installed about 1 km from Base Omega, where it is possible to find and eliminate at item tests as well as hazmat suits that can be given under exceptional conditions. Patient Zero Documentation of the disease was only possible thanks to the collaboration between in the MEG and the doctors. The latter is a group of doctors who, re who rediscovered Level 109. Through their explorations, they quickly came across rooms infested with NC-19 at concentrations much more intense than what is typically seen in the back rooms. Moreover, the hospital's abandoned appearance seems to prove the theory of a disorganized escape by staff who had once worked there. These assumptions were confirmed by the discovery of the level's archives, which were created by a former group who worked in, that, at, in what they called the dimension of the hospital. Although parts of this data had been corrupted over time, the most important information could be collected. Patient zero of the disease with the water who had entered himself on level 2, named Dimension of the Pipes, in a retrieved data, and came to level 109 for a blood test. Nevertheless, the individual, oh, this individual unfortunately spread the disease to some staff members, possibly through his blood, which spread the disease the bacteria airborne. 
The group was unprepared for a disease unknown to the backrooms, which quickly led to an epidemic despite the hospital's infection control measures. Staff as well as patients were forced to flee through in the Oak Cliff portals that seemed to be much more stable and consistent than those of today. However, these people were not free of the disease, which allowed Ocephalococcus pneumonialis to spread throughout the backrooms. There is still a great deal of mystery surrounding the emergence of this disease, particularly in terms of its creation. These documents have also raised new questions about the presence of colonies of Candate MEG. It is certain that this organization and lack of cohesion between small groups causes succession of incidents. But questions remain about the knowledge and skills that former colonies now extinct may have acquired. Looks like that's it. <sighs> Just three more. <laughs> it's already almost an hour long. <sighs> Today was supposed to be a short day. And see 20 skits. And not like the ones you see on YouTube and such. Entity ID 20. Habitats all. Description. Entity 20 referred to as skits are small crustaceous features that stem from the Amaloceridae family, which were extinct in the front rooms around, which went extinct in the front rooms around 448 million years ago. Skits infest almost every known level of the back rooms, with, with the only known level to not contain any being level 6. This is how common they are alongside their edibility. Now, these skits have become one of the primary forms of nutrition in the back rooms. Unlike most other species from the the family that we just mentioned, which were known for being large predators during their time, skits are completely harmless entities, posing absolutely zero threats to wanderers. They are passive of creatures that absolutely roam around the back rooms, with seemingly no goal or destination. It has been observed that under entities such as clumps, hounds, facing insulars, and wretches are not aggressive towards skits. However, entities such as death moths, dolors, and evryooks act extremely aggressive on sight. Oftentimes, any consumption of the skit. It is currently unknown why some creatures act aggressive towards skits while others do not. Further research into the matter is being conducted. Biology Physically, skits are, are identical to the Anolocaris, the largest part of the, of the family. We are not going to say that word again. However, the two vastly differ in other aspects, such as habitat, diet, and behavior. One of the largest differences between two creatures is their mental capabilities. The Anomalocaris were thought to be an extremely smart species as well as great hunters, earning them the title of the earliest examples of an apex predator. Skits, however, are the exact opposite. To such a degree, they have I've called into question if the creatures are even sentient beings. This debate of sentience is caused by the behavior of the creatures. Creatures consisting of growing around aimlessly and seemingly nothing more. The creatures have shown no need for food, water, or other forms of energy. Nor do they seem to have a purpose or goal in their movements. Another large, large difference in the two between two species is their habitats. The family is comprised of aquatic creatures. Skits, on the hand, have been shown to survive on land and in water, making them closer to an amphibious creature than a crustacean. One of the more interesting properties of skits is the ability is its ability to be safely eaten raw. This property is what makes skits one of the most useful creatures within the backrooms, providing a quick and widely available form of nutrients. <sighs> Similar to many other entities, skits appear to be unable to or wish not to reproduce. However, unlike most other entities, which simply appear and disappear at random, skits undergo a process similar to mitosis, allowing the creature to create exact carbon copies of themselves. It is presumed that this ability would lead to the infestation of the creatures throughout the back rooms. Discovery The earliest report of an entity E20 was on July 3rd, 2013, I'm going to assume at this point, by a member of the fully 
of a new form group called the MEG. Water has fired them while exploring the a Beverly room on level 5. They, a soon after contact the division head overseeing the establishment of the medic outpost housekeeping for further inquiry into the creature. Below is chain email between the wanderers. Miss Ale Miss Al Ale Aleni Keller and the division head Miss is John Miller. These messages were provided by the MEG for archival purposes. From Keller to Miller. I've never done one of these before, so excuse my lack of professionalism, but I think I found what could be a new entity on level 5. I've never seen it before, and it looks kind of like a shrimp, with some kind of scales coming out the side of it. There are three of them just crawling along the floor in the Beverly room. Good evening, Mrs. Keller. Your lack of professionalism is... Fine for the duration of this conversation, as I am aware you are new and have yet to fully, to be fully acquainted with everything. I am intrigued about this so-called new entry you have discovered within level five. Would you be in for assistance with who, who safely examine it and/or capture a photo of this of the creature? I got closest to it to get a photo of which I will send after this message. As far as describing the creature. I feel there isn't much more to say beyond what I, I have already. They just continue to slowly crawl across the floor with seemingly no purpose. I'll let you know if anything notable happens. Kind of cute. Says I need to put a caption, I don't know. Well, I can confidently say that I have never seen that before. I'm going to conduct a thorough search through the database to see if any e entities match the photo you have, have provided. Once I've concluded the search, I will update you on my findings. After looking across the files we currently have available on the database, there seems to be no available records of any creatures such as the one you have shown me. Suffice to say, we believe you are correct in believing that this is a new entity that we have not encountered before. A team is currently being organized to form further research up into the entity. Once prepared, they, are, they will be dispatched to your, your position. Until then, we ask that you stay at your current position and keep watch of the entities, documenting any further findings. The MEG thanks you for your efforts and cooperation during this situation. Do's and don'ts. Unlike most entities within the back rooms, NZ20 poses no threats to wanderers. When encountering a skit, there are no actions one should take, should or should not take. Though it is advised to take them, as carrying extra food is always a good idea. Moving on to NC21. Hookhead. This one actually it may it may think that it might be a little bit spooky. I forgot to note the time I'm that I finished reading the E disease. NC21, hookhead. Boo! Did I get you? That's right, it's a time of year and when gas and ghouls run freely and you can get a cold case of free candy just by wandering up to strangers. It's Halloween! Now I can already hear you yelling into the radio, cursing me, targeting my I name with vile slurs and saying, but time doesn't work that way in the back rooms, dear Ralph. How can I be Halloween? And you would be right to... And you would be right. To be fair, but you know what they say. It's October 31st somewhere. Oh yeah, did you know they changed that? Get mad at the government for changing that. Or at least, that's the attitude that the denizens of level 11 have decided to take. Even wandering the less populated zone, you'd be hard pressed not to see some orange and black streamers or a paper skeleton in the window because everyone here is preparing for tonight. Naturally, with all of the wonkiness that comes with aging in the back rooms, we've decided that at least for tonight, no one's too old to trick or treat. You may even see me, dear listener, in my beast of level 5 costume that I made out of an old suit and a paper mache octopus mask. If you do, feel free to say hi and load me up with a couple extra uh, king size twin fingers if you please. I kind of hate that, uh, that, uh, uh, that people decided there was an age limit to trick or treating in the first place. But let's continue on. By digress, no, dear viewer. Today's show isn't going to be a half hour of me extorting candy from you. 
as much as I would enjoy that. No, today we're here to tell a story. A scary story, in fact. For today is the... Oh right, I already did my ghost and ghoul spiel. Anyways, today I will be telling you the terrifyingly true story of the Hookhead. Beware, beware. It is said that once a wanderer, perhaps a wanderer just like you, was driving through the streets of level 69. Don't laugh, dear listener. Tonight is not the night for middle school humor. No, on All Hallows Eve, even the so-called sex number should strike fear into the hearts of our bravest listeners. Level 69 is one scary place, an infinite highway covered in fog, but I think I can make it a little bit scarier. Let's get into this story. Alone in level 69, one Halloween night, with only the car headlight to guide them, our hero experiments with a car radio dial and a voice can be heard in the static. Tread these duck, ruck up ye Joe's butchery exactly one year ago as the establishment and its owner Joseph of Gloss Upshire, Gloppy Joe, to his friends, that his heads had been clean off by an erect and meat hook when butchering some a meat for the town's famous Halloween feast. This was a sad occasion for us all, as old Gloppy was a beloved member of our community. Our hero is confused. Where could this be broadcasting from? But they listen and on, transfixed by the glory, by the gory story that fills their, air, their ears. Things seem to have gotten worse for Gloppy's friends and families. It seems his spirit has not been truly put to rest. Our hero hears a faint scratch on the car door. Pays no mind. It must just be the wind, I think. Signs begin earlier today of a strange man with a large hook in place of his, of his head. While connection is not conf confirmed, 12 murders have, have happened so far today, and police suspect old gloves, or at least what's left of him, might even be going for 13. Police say that murders haven't shown too many patterns, but that they seem to target people who are driving alone in their cars. Scratch, scratch, scratch. If you hear any scratching of hooks or hook adjacent and implements, don't bother calling the police. It's already too late for you. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Our hero can hear it now, the scratching. Suddenly, surely the broadcast couldn't apply to me, they think. There's no way this accident happened back from his end on level 069 of all places. But the scratching grows louder, and they still cannot bear to look out their side window for fear of what they might see. Scratch, scratch, scratch. The radio face is out. Shit, just when I was reaching a good part too. Now you're alone in level 69, driving down the foggy road, and not even the sound of radio is there to drown out your thoughts. Alone in the silence, you start to hear noises. Soft at first, but they start to get clearer. Is that... a scratching? No. It has to just be the wind. Right? Right? <laughs> you wish it was just a wind. Entity number 22, Habitat Outdoors. Hmm? All outdoor levels, okay. Description, Entity number 2, known as... Also known as warning kites, refers to a group of kites of childish design. Each kite varies in size and design without a cot. As Entity 22 cannot be spotted or manifested. When danger is near a wanderer, Entity 22 will then warn the wanderer of the incoming danger. These Entity 
is can be found on any outdoor level and are directly proportional to the, the danger level of the wandering surroundings. When danger is more than an acre of a, of a wanderer, NC-22 will, for, will manifest in hordes of indeterminate in amounts. They can be seen flying in the opposite direction of the, the danger. This is our way of telling the wanderer which direction the danger is in. When directly overhead of a wanderer, childish laughter and cheering can be heard. The a louder the sounds produced from NC-22 are, the closer the danger is. Entity 22 is completely not. What? Damn, okay. Entity 22 is completely neutral towards humans and will make no attempt at harming an individual. However, when warning a wanderer, they will also not make any attempt to stop danger other than and only warning the aforementioned individual. Depending on the quantity of the danger, this goes towards hostile entities. The quantity of NC-22 will increase. The offset at for the if you are amount of ounce of danger. When out of range, approximately 60 kilometers from a wanderer, NC-22 will explode, releasing confetti from its interior and producing a sound similar to children cheering. Biology: NC-22 is constructed of a metal mesh outlined of a nylon fabric. There are strings attached to the bottom of the kites that lead to an unknown location. During their tests, it's concluded that these kites have some form of nerve endings capable of receiving pain and touch. Otherwise, all characteristics of NC-22 are the same as a typical kite. Discovery On May 28, 2021, NC-22 was first discovered level 10 when the water was in in close proximity to two skin insulars. The wanderer later heard a group of children cheering and looked up to find a horde of kites flying away from the skin stillers. The wanderer followed the kites and ended up surviving until the MEG recovered him. Do's and don'ts. Do look up when you feel endangered. Do listen for cheering. Do follow Entity 22. Do acknowledge the quantity and loudness of Entity 22. Don't ignore Entity 22. Don't take down Entity 22. Don't run the opposite direction of Entity 22. Anyway, that was a long video about uh, just a few entities that are in the back rooms. I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting this to be probably about half an hour. It took twice as long because the disease is apparently had a much longer story than I was anticipating. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!